What's up, everybody? We are back. John Della Rose here, DellaRose.com. That's D E L A R R O Z.com. And if you like my taste in comics, you should head over there now. I'll leave the link in the description below. You get a free graphic novel for signing up for my newsletter. That simple. Pretty awesome. Believe in books. That's what we do here. This is Thor the Mighty Avenger, the complete collection, which is a mini series that was done, I believe, in 2010. 2000, somewhere back there. 2000, yeah, 2010, 2011. And I really enjoyed it. This came kind of after the Straczynski Thor run. And I think I got it by accident because I, I hadn't canceled my uh, pull list at my comic book shop yet, which I, was, which I was intending on doing around that point. And then I got the issue and I was like, wow, this is really good. And I was a, bit, a little confused at the time because it didn't mention anything about continuity or anything like that. And of course, this is just an out of continuity, all ages story that they just kind of, you know, use the characters uh, from Marvel lore to kind of give a, you know, just general take on them for, for all ages readers. And I love that. I love all ages comics. I love comics that are just fun and don't have you know, those dark themes and all that that we get in most stuff these days. And this is my favorite Thor run of all time. So uh, I was talking on Twitter the other day because Donnie Cates was asking about good all ages comics, I think for his niece or something like that. And I mentioned this and he said, oh yeah, that runs really great. I got to reread that. And I was like, I should reread this too. And sure enough, there's a complete collection, which makes me very happy. And it's probably the smallest complete collection I've ever seen. I don't know that there are any shorter than this. There are only eight issues plus a free comic book day special. If there are any shorter, let me know in the comments. But I think this is the shortest, smallest complete collection there is. And it's tragic because this series was canceled ahead of its time. It, it looked like they were kind of building something up for a few storylines in here, which I'll get to in a second. And they just kind of abandoned them. But it starts out with... Thor. It actually starts out with Jane Foster. And Jane Foster is just kind of this like lonely, smart, yet, yet cute, innocent girl next door working at a museum. And she gets this dream about a rainbow bridge and all that. And sure enough, Thor is about to show up. I love Chris Samney's art. And I'll just start right here. He's very, quote, simple. Uh, it's, it's in that Alex Toth style where you, know, you just get a couple lines and it defines everything and it's there and you got it. I mean, sometimes you get a, a, some of these panels where they don't even have faces and it's not necessary. Um, or look at, look at the guard here. He's just got like a little, you know, one line for an eye, one line for a, for a mouth. But you know what? You, you're reading it as the full context of what's going on. It works very well. And again, she's very, very simple lines right here. So I love reading Chris Samney's art. I think it's beautiful. Um, it, he's probably one of my top five favorite artists out there right now. And so this is just a joy. And this is actually where I discovered him the first time as it was. Um, and so Thor at this point, they think he's a hobo crashing into a museum. And then Jane Foster is kind of the only one who really believes in him. And she takes him under her wing. Very sweet. It's, it's like super wholesome. And, uh, then he finally recovers his hammer and actually becomes Thor at the end of this. And... Uh, in the next one, he, you know, he, he just kind of gets closer with Jane Foster and there's some bad stuff going on. We find Mr. Hyde out there. Uh, we, we get these like, Roger Langridge is actually as a writer, I should mention also, is a, is a cartoonist who kind of does, you know, short gag strips. And so we get a few short gag slice of life things with Thor dealing with <laughs> slices of life through this, which adds a lot of humor to the book too. So we get, we get the scenes with Mr. Hyde and Mr. Hyde is is tearing out the museum and, and Thor finally shows up and and the first issue he didn't have powers uh, yet and then he figured it out in this one and takes the guy down. And you just get some beautiful, beautiful closure at the end of this. Every issue has its own deal. So you can read them as single issues. It's start and finish like old comics used to be. I mean, this is, this is perfection in comics, guys, for real. This is everything I ever wanted out of comics. And here we learn through Thor's nightmares that Odin actually has banished him to Earth and, and taken his memories from him. We get Loki showing up uh, because of so he did something wrong. And we don't learn what that something wrong is. Again, this was canceled. But obviously, you know, Thor was trying to get back to Asgard through this, and he was cut out of it. 
And that's that's where we've left off. Ant-Man and the Wasp show up, and they're classic Ant-Man and the Wasp. They just feel good. Janet and um, and Hank Pym are uh, friends together, and there's none of that reference to the incontinuity stuff that's nasty with the whole Ant-Man getting ruined with the whole wife-beating thing. It's just a happier time. These are just innocent comics. This is just a, look at this panel here. It's just classic, classic comics, and love it on every single level. So even the coloring, they did a muted coloring where it's almost flats uh, in a lot of the panels. So you get a little shading here, but it's almost flats. And that way it really feels like the old school comics, especially with the Alex Toth style that Sam D has with his art. Uh, the Warriors 3 kind of show up in this next one. They, they go to a pub and deal with Captain Britain. Now, Roger Langridge was supposed to do Captain Britain uh, is the backstory behind this. And he was taken for something else. And so this was his inserting that like into like, I wanted to do that because Roger Langridge is a UK guy. Um, and so, yeah, we get Namor fight. I mean, you just get a beautiful thing. And, and the relationship between Jane Foster and Thor during this entire thing just progresses so wonderfully. Every issue just builds on it just a little bit. And Thor does something very sweet for her in this issue with Namor. And they end up fighting a giant whale thing. So, <laughs> very cute. Uh, unlike most versions of Namor, you would expect that the Submariner and, and Thor would have like a like a fight together where there'd, there'd be some misunderstanding and, and Namor would be kind of a jerk, but that didn't happen here. Uh, so I was very happy with that too. Like the Sub-Namor was actually, the Submariner, it's the Sub-Namor. The Submariner was actually uh, shown as pretty heroic. So in the next one, he actually goes back into Asgard or at least attempts to, I just love this here. Just Jane that just looks so happy and wonderful and like a nice person. I just love it. Oh my gosh. Chris Sandy's art makes me so happy. Um, and uh, he's refused entry into Asgard in this one. So we, we're, we're kind of building that a little bit and then we finally get the kiss. Oh my gosh, how exciting. So <laughs> just super, super good stuff. We're very happy. Um, in issue seven, it, this is like a two issue one that kind of wraps around issue eight, uh, where, where it comes to an abrupt halt. Um, and uh, there lots of lots of emotional drama for the first several pages. And then it opens up into this like giant robot fighting Thor and several giant robots fighting Thor. And of course, Iron Man shows up in the middle of that, which means, and uh, we get a little Iron Man here, classic Tony Stark as he's just like, oh, hey ladies. Um, just good stuff. I love the characterizations all around, and they're so unique and so different through here. But Thor gets captured. Iron Man shows up, and this is the Iron Man suit that he wears, and this is a very uh, very retro-looking suit, very cool design through here. And they beat the bad guys in this. But then it kind of just abruptly ends, so we did get no closure on the Thor, uh, you know, why he's here, whether he's going to be let into Asgard, what he's supposed to do to fix things. We get nothing about it and we're just uh we're just kind of end right there which is really sad free comic book day uh then kind of resurrected this i don't know if it was during this or not uh, i actually never read the three free comic book day one before so this is a nice bonus for me but this is actually a little bit of a time travel -y deal where uh, captain america and thor are thrust and classic captain america are thrust into camelot and it turns out Loki is is uh, kind of messing with the Merlin thing. So very cute. Uh, doesn't really have a ton to do with the rest of the series, but uh, it, it works out, you know, as a one-off, it works very well, very nice. And then we get back into some relationship stuff at the end. So really nice. I mean, I could have, if this continued forever, I'd be happy. Uh, this, is, this is what I would want Thor to be. This is what I want Marvel Comics to be in general. They just crush it here, and I'm very sad that we only have eight issues and a free comic book day special. 10 out of 10, go pick this up. It's really cheap. You can get them real cheap used on Amazon. Just do it, Nike. All right, hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll be back soon.